Welcome to this video on uh, paper three, the human uh, geography fieldwork, which is of course the Plymouth fieldwork. This will be the uh, longer version of the video. I'll also break this video down into six uh, separate um, videos as well, and it will follow a similar format to the Perimporth or physical fieldworks uh, in a similar playlist on the YouTube channel. So. Uh, your title up there on the board, Evaluate the Impact of the Drake Circus Redevelopment on the CBD, aka Central Business District of Plymouth. On the left hand side is the exam board specification. It's everything you need to know about fieldwork. What we'll do in this video is we'll go through the entirety of um, one to six there on the board for the Plymouth fieldwork. So after watching this video, you should know absolutely everything you need to know about your Plymouth fieldwork. Okay, and so what makes a suitable inquiry question? You guys, uh, this year, you've got two uh, inquiry questions, one physical, one human, um, and I'll put that up on the board in a moment exactly what those are. But to make a successful inquiry, you need to be smart. Now, that what this is, is one of those like acronym things where every letter means something. So in terms of the S first, your inquiry question, your title needs to be simple. It should be a single question, uh, like a simple hypothesis, and make sure it has a clear link to geographical theory. I'll come back to that in a moment, but both of your titles do achieve that, but they need to be nice and simple, nice and straightforward. The M there is measurable. Can your inquiry actually be measured? Is it possible to get adequate data? Can you actually measure something that will give you an answer? In terms of the A, is it, it's, uh, A is achievable. Is the location easy to access, for example? Can it actually be done in the in the amount of time set? Uh, can you even visit the location that you're trying to do an inquiry question in? For us, doing an inquiry question in Barbados, for example, it just simply isn't going to work. The R is realistic. Can your title actually be achieved? Will it be possible to reach a viable conclusion? Can you actually get to a point where you can clearly say yes or no? Timed. Um, sorry, the T I should say is timed. Um, does your title require data over a long period of time? If so, a one day field work is not going to work. So those smart targets again, simple, measurable, achievable, realistic and timed. Okay, and so what about your title, uh, Evaluate the Impact of the Drake Circus Redevelopment on the CBD of Plymouth? Um, in reality, that title is not really suitable, particularly for one day's um, field work. You can't really on one day identify all the impacts of uh, Drake Circus, because what we're really doing on that one day, we are assuming that the results will be repeated across all the other days that you could potentially visit Plymouth. Furthermore, we can't really um, prove causality very well here. And the reason why we can't prove causality is we don't really know um, what Plymouth was like before Drake Circus was built. We don't have any fieldwork data for that. And as a result of that, we if we are saying like um, it's had a negative impact in Market Avenue, for example, you can't really prove that Drake Circus is actually the cause of that negative impact. So there's a lot of assumptions here. And as a result, it's probably not a, a realistic fieldwork title uh, uh, to be done over one day. Furthermore, um, you can't actually go and visit the entire city centre in one day. So in terms of time and in terms of is it manageable, then, then probably not. Uh, as So you can certainly argue that your title is not suitable uh, for a one day field work. OK, then uh, what are concepts underpinning this inquiry? So in terms of the exam board spec, um, we have the concept that UK cities are changing uh, and this creates opportunities and challenges. Uh, we also uh, hopefully you've used uh, Drake Circus as your example in class as uh, as part of Vision Plymouth, the urban regeneration project. And the idea is the exam board needs us to have this Vision Plymouth project to show reasons why an area needed regeneration as well as the main features of the project 
uh, the successes and failings of the urban regeneration and uh, different stakeholder views. A stakeholder is anyone with, with an interest. So as a result, if we look at this um, in terms of Drake Circus, Drake Circus opened in 2006, costing uh, approximately £170 million as part of the citywide redevelopment, which was uh, Vision Plymouth. Remember, redevelopment is uh, when buildings are knocked down and uh, a new building is uh, built in its place. You should have seen in class the uh, images of uh, the of Drake Circus in 1995. Um, quite a utilitarian, quite ugly, quite run down, quite derelict. And the idea is to redevelop that to try and um, bring people back to the to CBD. Um, Drake Circus was considered necessary due to the challenges that Plymouth was facing in, in 1990s, chief amongst which was urban decay, um, where areas of the city fall into dereliction, and that had particularly occurred in Upper Plymouth uh, in the, the former Drake Circus area. It was hoped that this undercover shopping complex would attract high-end retail shops, for example Apple Primark, and therefore that would attract more shoppers into the city centre who would therefore pay more tax. And as a result, Plymouth City Council would have more money to invest it in the town to make it more aesthetically pleasing. And, and in addition, it would also lead to that positive multiplier effect of more shops would want to move to Plymouth on the grounds that customers have been attracted in. Uh, initially, reception of the building was not positive. It won the award for the worst new building. Uh, I think it's called Crimes Against Architecture, the Carbuncle Cup in uh, 2006. In your field work, you're going to be, or you did, investigate um, the impact on the wider CBD, Upper Plymouth at the top of the hill, down towards Lower Plymouth at the bottom of the hill, where if you imagine the sundial as your point in between. And you had to work out in this fieldwork if the impact was positive or negative for people, the economy and the environment. And you did that across six sites that we'll look at uh, covering almost the entire CBD in a little bit. So that's the, the theory, the geography you have to understand before we can answer this question. Okay, then one of the uh, questions in the exam that could, could, could uh, sorry, one of the questions in the exam that could come up from this. Um, part of the course, part of the spec, is to justify why your location was suitable. Now then, green, obviously, your physical um, uh, fieldwork, pink or red, that should be, is your uh, human fieldwork. The first two boxes you can see are exactly the same. If this is a two-mark question, you go your point and your so what. It's close to school, so you save money on transport, two marks. It's close to school, only a one-hour coach journey, so save money on transport. If they're the same point as is the second point there, you get there quickly, you've got more time to collect primary data on the day. The final one is actually the same as well. You might see that several sites can be accessed easily, all sites are contained so safer. Talk about Plymouth CBD here, there are only six sites and they're all in a rectangle in the CBD which are all walkable. The reason we take you there is it's safer than perhaps going to Truro, more of a zigzaggy medieval layout really, and as a result of that it's much more difficult to keep a track on the students and therefore you're less safe. The human field, I've only put three risks up on the board for this because actually any risk that you um, associate with a human field work is pretty much answered in the same way. So the traffic one first, you're going to stay in a pedestrianised area, that means that actually there are no cars apart from emergency service vehicles, so you're more likely to be safe from road traffic accidents, and you're also obviously going to follow all safety and road signs when crossing the road, etc. Getting lost from the group, exactly the same as any other one really, emergency phone number, first aid kit, staying in groups of three, etc, etc. Pretty much all of the uh, human field work risks are essentially the same. The terrorist attack one is the one I want to make you really aware of. Um, you need to be aware of the run, hide, tell um, briefing, which is quite simply, as it says, if there is an attack, then uh, quite simply you run away, then you hide, then you tell someone else, whether that be to phone uh, the emergency services or to phone um, the member of staff involved. With that in mind, you've got a clear meeting point identified, which was probably the sundial. Or alternatively, it could have been um, Plymouth Ho would be another place you're likely to be told to go. And the emergency phone number is given out. That's your first um, fieldwork video done there. Obviously, at this stage, it's email me if you're not sure about anything in that video. I think these questions are quite likely to be quite small questions, two or three marks, but uh, important nevertheless. 
So at this stage, just to drag you back to the uh, specification, you've now covered everything you need to know about the human fieldwork in uh, box number one, which is, um, uh, I've drawn a red box around it. Uh, as a result of that, well done for getting this through far through the video, you are rewarded with a bad joke. What kind of nut grows on walls? A walnut. That might be the least creative joke ever. Anyway, part two on to now, uh, essentially it's the methods that you used. So, really crucial here, you know the difference between primary and secondary data. Primary is data you collect yourself first hand. It's not manipulated anywhere, you're simply counting or asking questions. You just simply record what's given to you. Primary data, because you went out and got it first hand. Secondary data, information from other sources. Um, it's been collected by someone else, it's been manipulated by someone else. We have to remember here that the issue straight away becomes this concept of bias. And remember also that secondary data can be out of date. So what primary data did you use in your uh, Plymouth fieldwork? So start from the top, you used a pedestrian count, quite literally, uh, you stood in a place for 10 minutes and you counted the number of people heading towards and also away from Drake Circus. The reason why you did this was to consider the social impact of Drake Circus, to see if the area around Drake Circus is a more popular area of Plymouth, and to be able to answer the question, are people using the redevelopment or are they actually opting to shop in the rest of Plymouth? Obviously, uh, if you're counting more people there, you're assuming that there are more shoppers in that area. The next one you did was a void count where you walked up uh, your six sites, um, Drake Circus, Upper New George Street, Upper Cornwall Street, Lower Cornwall Street, Lower New George Street and Market Avenue. And you walked along uh, to consider the uh, economic impact of that area by counting the number of empty retail units. As a result of this, we could consider the economic impact because it has Drake Circus caused a pattern of shop closure around Plymouth. Obviously a higher score there, um, a more negative economic impact has happened. The final one is the environmental quality survey is to consider the environmental impact of Drake Circus. You went to those areas um, and scored um, the aesthetics of the area from plus two to minus two. For example, desirability, you might have looked at, or um, natural features, and you've scored it between plus two saying it's a positive environmental score to minus two, a negative environmental quality score. So that's the data that you collected in your Plymouth field work. Okay, then how did you decide which areas to look at in Plymouth? Uh, as I've mentioned previously, quite simply, there's not enough time to do that field uh, work for the entirety of Plymouth city centre. Um, and as a result, you've only selected six of uh, six sites of the possible CBD, probably covering around about 75% of it. As a result of that, what we have had to do is uh, sample. Now sampling, as explained also in the parent port video, is to um, consider certain areas of a, a wider area and assume that the impacts will be the same. Now, obviously, there's massive issues with that. As soon as you use the word assumption, um, it means that the, the assumption could be incorrect. We might well be applying that the impact is uh, X across the entire city of Plymouth, where actually that would not be the case. So you assume that the data would be exactly the same uh, as the sample if we actually collected it. Obviously, that approach has flaws just explained. The reason for sampling, remember, is that we haven't had enough time. We haven't got enough money to get you out of school for, for that amount of time to do a full CBD check. So first things first with sampling, sample size is really important. The larger the sample size, the more accurate the data. So if you're looking at number one down at the bottom, you've taken one sample size or sorry, one sample site in all of that area. Clearly, um, investigation number two is far more accurate on the basis it has a larger sample size, more sites, therefore it's more accurate. So number two, more accurate. Big problem here. Number two will also be much, much, much more expensive and take a lot more time. So what sampling did I use, Mr. Toms? Well, you used stratified sampling. You chose six specific areas of Plymouth CBD covering the majority of the CBD. So you've got site one there in Drake Circus, site two is Upper Cornwall Street, site three is Lower Cornwall Street, site four is Upper New George Street, site five is Lower New George Street, and site six is uh, Market Avenue. 
However, when you're looking at that sampling, you can hopefully see that we haven't gone up to um, uh, the Sainsbury's redevelopment, the Armada Way redevelopment, and you also haven't gone to uh, Royal Parade, or actually down as far as Union Street, because there are also shops down there to the far um, west of Plymouth. So you haven't surveyed the entire city, but you have stratified it by considering six sites. Now Plymouth works really well for this on the grounds that actually the sites are designated as streets. So actually again linking to your risk assessment here, nice and easy for you guys so you don't get lost. However, there are other meta samplings that you could slash uh, should have used. For example, you could have used random sampling. Random sampling, you use a, a very clever calculator uh, and you generate a number anywhere between 0 and 100 in this case. And what you could have done is rather than pick the, the six areas, you could have asked the uh, random number generator to give you a number. You walk that many meters away from Drake Circus and do your surveys in that place. The reason for that is you may well actually end up covering more of the CBD. It, it may well tell you, um, oh, by the way, you can also ask the calculator to tell you what direction to walk in as well. Um, and as a result of that, you might have actually surveyed uh, more areas of the CBD, a wider variety, if you like. You, you might have ended up at Royal Parade, for example. Um, however, the reason we didn't do that, if you need to justify why we didn't do it, um, is because of the like the danger element that it, it could ask you to walk 100 metres uh, east of Drake Circus. You end up in a road. So we didn't use it for that reason, but you certainly could have used random sampling. Uh, to get a, a broader environmental quality search. So fantastic, that's everything on uh, part one and part two of the uh, human field work done. Hopefully you are still um, awake. Obviously, if not, this joke will clearly be side splitting. Um, what kind of nuts are always sneezing? Cashews cashew hmm. next one is part three appropriate ways of presenting fieldwork data with the positives and negatives of each so in the uh, Plymouth field trip how did or Plymouth field work I should say how did you present your data how did I present my data um, you did for the pedestrian count you did a located bar chart or potentially a flow line depending on her who uh, was your teacher you did a, uh, for the void count you did a pie chart for the environmental quality you did a radar graph Let's take each of those in turn and work out the positives and negatives of each. So the located bar graph first, um, very similar to the Per and Porth uh, video if you've seen that. The way you did this was you counted the number of people from left and right and, or sorry, heading towards Drake Circus and heading away from Drake Circus. You worked that out, you chopped the bar out and stuck it directly onto a map of the six sites. So it is a way of comparing quantities or frequencies very easily, um, and it's very easy to identify the trend. Because it's actually applied to a location, you can see the trend specific to the place you're talking about. And in this case, it was easy to identify the trend that there were higher pedestrian counts in Upper Plymouth. However, the negative of located bar charts and also flow lines, as you'll see in a minute, is when you put them onto a map, it might cover named places. It might literally cover the explanation of why there's more people in a place and as a result of that it, it it's not perfect when you're considering um, working out or interpreting or inferring from next one is flow lines um, flow lines explained there in the left uh, on oh, in black text indicate direction and volume of movement with thickness representing volume so essentially if you look at the map above here the the bigger the um, or sorry, the wider the arrow, the, the more people are moving. So in this case, it would appear to me that India is probably the biggest source of people to um, uh, to the United States of America, free migration. Um, positive is, again, very similar to located bar chart. It is relatively easy to see the trend. I've just done it there from Asia or India, wherever that uh, line is coming from. The, the general trend is easy. There's more people migrating from India and Asia than Oceania on that map, as an example. However, the negative is it, quite hard to see the actual scale. Um, I wouldn't stick my neck out and say there's more people from Asia than Mexico because it's not the easiest thing in the world to see. So the scale is quite tricky to do. What is the actual figure it is going to take a lot longer to work out. It does take a lot more time to, to measure and you can have crossing over arrows. If you look on this example, you've got an arrow coming out of uh, Mexico and an arrow coming out of South America that 
across each other, that can be quite tricky to understand. Pie charts as used for um, your void count. Uh, simple circle divided into segments. I mean, in terms of the ones you did for um, uh, Plymouth and the void counts, I mean, the, the answers were either closed or not closed. So it's very easy to see the, the overall trend. More tricky is to compare the different size segments, particularly between two different areas. So you would have had a pie chart of Upper New George Street and a pie chart of Lower New George Street. It's quite tricky to compare the size of those segments to get these like the specific figure unless the figure is actually written on. Radar graphs, uh, you did this for the Environmental Quality Survey. You also did it in the Perrinpore field trip for the bipolar surveys. It's a way of displaying data that has the same scoring system. This only works for data that has the same score. So if, for example, some of the scores are very happy to very unhappy, and then another score is um, ages, I don't know, a teenager, working age, retired, you can't put that onto a radar graph because it's got two very different scoring methods. However, in this case, for your environmental quality survey, everything was scored between plus two and minus two based on your opinion. So you can have many different factors on the same graph, despite the fact that actually um, they, they are very different, very disparate uh, things you're measuring because they all have the same scoring system. So the positives, it's very easy to identify the anomalies and, and the general trend. Uh, if you look at the example over there, the anomalies are really, really do stand out. Look at December and June on the uh, blue line. It really does stick out. And as a result, um, it, it's a big, big positive of it. The anomalies really stand out. However, um, the negatives, it is very hard to read when you have multiple radar graphs on the same um, axes and as a result you have crossing over lines and that can be tricky to, to work out. It's also quite tricky to calculate the, the total score at the end as well on the grounds that unlike a bar chart where you can just put a ruler and, and read across to the y-axis. On this one you have to do quite a lot of math. You have to do, uh, for example, the blue line, you have to do 8 plus 3 plus 9, I think that is, plus, oh, what, what number's that? Mm, 3, and it just takes a lot longer to do. So it can also be tricky to calculate the total score. Now the last one in Plymouth, which you definitely did, are field sketches, which is a drawing done outside of the classroom. Useful this because it can be used in the classroom. You can infer the aesthetics of each area. So it's quite useful for your environmental quality survey to do a quick field sketch and go, ah, oh, that's, the, that's the reason I gave Market Avenue a minus two for desirability, for example. The negatives... Um, some of you are not the best drawers in the world. Um, you also did it in windy conditions. But the big problem is bias. You will enhance the factor that you want to. So if you look at the uh, little field sketch there on the right hand side, I think that person is enhancing the trees. They're making it the center point of that diagram, where actually perhaps they wouldn't be to another person standing there who might want to emphasize um, the grandeur of the buildings in the background. So field sketches are biased. They are not a photograph, which is uh, specific evidence of um, uh, like a, a snapshot in time. Field sketches are open to interpretation. So that's one, two and three done for the Plymouth field trip. So we are certainly getting through it. Um, another nuts joke, I suppose. Uh, why did the peanut complain to the police? Because he had been assaulted <laughs> number four is our results describing analyze and explaining the results that we got in plymouth well here you go here here are your results in plymouth um remember these are averaged results averaged results from uh both days of the plymouth field trip Surprisingly, every year has very similar results, but who knew? Who knows the reason why? So here we go. What have we got then? We've got the pedestrian count in the top left-hand corner. We've got the void count in the right and environmental quality at the bottom. Uh, just to go through the codes a second, LNGS is Lower New George Street. Uh, LC is Lower Cornwall. DC is Drake Circus. I'm sure you can work the rest of it out. Let's go through each of these and see if we can work out what the results are telling us. So start with the pedestrian count. Um, 
the general trend is more people are counted in Upper Plymouth compared to Lower Plymouth. Looking at the results, we've got scores of 500, 420 and 520 in Upper Plymouth and scores far less than that, 190, 45, 41. Most people are at Drake Circus, that redevelopment that we're interested in, with the least people at Lower Cornwall Street, a range of 479 people over a 10 minute period. In your exam, do not panic if you can't remember the exact range of people. If you put 500 people, that'd be fine. If you put 1,000 people, that'd be fine. But if you can, always try and evidence your points. Upper Plymouth is a more popular location. Uh, redeveloped DC is the most popular location. The Towards and Away Drake Circus, um, I mean, the results there would tell you that more people are moving towards Drake Circus. However, um, you'll see a little bit later that perhaps those uh, results might not be fully reliable and overly useful. The Void Count, remember that you per calculate the percentages in class. The Void Count empty retail units are demonstrated by that image on the right hand side. Okay then, let's have a little look at results. There are less empty retail units in Upper Plymouth compared to Lower Plymouth. Well, we've got two areas of Upper Plymouth in 8% void count and one with uh, 0%. And in Lower Plymouth, we've got an 8, a 12 and a 14. So yes, that is true. The lowest void count is in the redeveloped Drake Circus at 0% of all retail units being void. Uh, take that with a little pinch of salt because as I'll explain later in the video, Drake Circus redevelopment is very good at covering those empty retail units. The highest void counts are found in Market Avenue and Lower Cornwall Street, which, interestingly enough, are, are the areas that are furthest away from Drake Circus. An 8% modal score, so the most common score here is 8%, which actually matches the national average in the UK across every city centre. There is an average of 8% closed or empty retail units. So the void count, just repeat, there are less empty retail units in Upper Plymouth compared to Lower Plymouth. The Environmental Quality Survey, uh, a little bit more trickier, quite a lot more numbers. Remember, a positive score is um, a positive environmental quality and a negative score, obviously, the opposite. So the highest environmental quality scores are in Upper Plymouth, um, a range of one between the Upper Plymouth sites. So if you look at the total score, Drake Circus 9, Upper Cornwall 9, and Upper New George Street 9 as well. The redeveloped Drake Circus is not the highest score, which you might start drawing a conclusion of straight away to argue, well, hang on a minute, that, that, that shows it's not a successful redevelopment because surely the more modern, redeveloped, only in 2006 Drake Circus should definitely have the highest environmental quality compared to your 1960s utilitarian uh, grid system that you'd see in Plymouth. However, just in brackets there, something we'll come back to later, there is a bit of an anomaly here uh, in Drake Circus, an anomaly score of minus two for noise. We'll consider that again a little bit later. Lower Plymouth has significantly lower scores. Yeah, a range of 13 between Drake Circus and uh, Market Avenue. I should say up Cornwall Street there and uh, Market Avenue. And Lower Plymouth scores negatively for desirability. Uh, if you look at the desirability scores on the right, we have minus three Drake Circus, uh, I'm sorry, minus three Market Avenue, minus two Lower New George Street, minus two Lower Cornwall. Look at the upper, Cornwall, uh, upper Plymouth scores, all positive. So in terms of desirability, which is probably uh, alongside natural features, one of the better ones to look at for environmental quality scores, uh, that desirability much, much, much lower. So in terms of um, uh, video so far, you've now covered what results you collected. Uh, we've done how we presented it. We've done the methods. We now only have left the conclusions and the evaluations. Uh, any more nut jokes? Yeah, there is one. Here we go. How do you know that peanuts are fattening? Have you ever seen a skinny elephant? That's not a joke, is it? Okay, then your conclusions for the Plymouth field trip. Um, uh, do we two here? As evidenced by all the results, the pedestrian count, the void count, and the environmental quality, it would appear that Drake Circus has had a positive impact on Upper Plymouth. The explanation there on the board, socially we've got more people there, um, more desirable place to spend time in. Economically there's a lower number of void shops, so that therefore means that businesses are surviving there. Environmentally it's got a higher aesthetic appeal when you look at the environmental quality scores. However, Drake Circus has not been uniformly positive, it appears to have a negative impact on Lower Plymouth for the exact opposite reasons as above. Socially less people, economically more void shops, 
in comparison to Upper Plymouth. And environmentally, uh, lower aesthetic appeal, particularly for desirability when you compare it to Upper Plymouth and Drake Circus. So the concept here is that this is a half and half, uh, con that Drake Circus has been positive for Upper Plymouth, but perhaps far less positive for Lower Plymouth. That's it for the conclusion, nice and straightforward. You do need to know what your conclusion is. Uh, you could well be asked a question on how reliable you believe your conclusions to be. And if that question comes up, knowing what the overall conclusion is will be very useful because then you can identify this is what my conclusion was. However, here are the uh, negatives with it. Right, we're out of nut jokes, so we'll go for an octopus joke. Um, uh, what does an octopus wear in cold weather? A coat of arms. How could the octopus afford a house? He prawned everything. Why does a person carry lots of octopuses in their wallet? Because they'd be squids in. There you go. Three octopus jokes for those people who have stuck through this video. Part six, the final section of this video, is the evaluation of the human fieldwork. This is the most important element or aspect of the fieldwork itself. It's the most likely questions that will come up. You need to be able to pick holes in, but also justify any methods that you have used, any results that you have got, any conclusions you've made, and in addition, any way that you've presented data. So let's look at our data collection methods. Uh, firstly, um, pedestrian count. You did not know the noti the motives. You did not know the motives of the people. Um, as a result of that, you've assumed that they are all shoppers. The reality is that they most definitely are not all shoppers. Some people would have been using Drake Circus as a cut through to get to the university or to get home if they lived on North Street or uh, Mutley in um, inner city Plymouth. So not knowing the motives, you can't say that Drake Circus has had a massively positive impact on Upper Plymouth because those people might simply have been there because geographically it's closer for them to get home if they use it as a cut through. Some of your groups on the day counted Penrith students and some didn't, which therefore throws all your results into uh, the, the realm of being unreliable. And you did not complete them at the same time. Some people did their service straight away. Some people went to Nando's and then did them later. As a result, it, it's not a fair comparison at all because some people have counted it at lunchtime where inevitably there will be more people out and about. Some people have counted it just before they got back on the bus at you know five past two. So you simply cannot compare that data. It is inaccurate and therefore unreliable. The void count, really important this one. Um, although you can argue that some of the shops have, or retail units are, are definitely empty, um, you can't prove what the cause of that was. Taking Plymouth as an example, uh, the BHS store or Toys R Us, you can't go there and go, ah, oh, Drake Circus is the cause of this closure because you don't know that. Uh, it could well be the advent of internet shopping. It could be that uh, competition moved into town. It could be that the business itself has gone bankrupt, has been poorly managed. It, you can't prove that Drake Circus is the closure uh, or is the reason for the closure. You can't prove causality. Uh, this really applies in Market Avenue that some of the smaller retail units were, were very hard to work out whether they were actually open for business or not. There were cafes in Market Avenue that I saw students count as, as void and empty. But the reality is was that they actually just opened at midday and, and stayed open till 10. So some of those were a bit more tricky to work out. But probably the biggest issue with the um, void count in terms of working out if a shop was open or closed actually happened in uh, Drake Circus, where the people in charge of Drake Circus do not want empty retail units to be visible to shoppers because that puts people off coming to an area. And as a result, they've covered them with uh, cardboard and wooden boards. And as a result, you, you'd just consider it part of the walls where actually it is a covered retail unit. Uh, St. Austell Town Centre have done this as well, the former site of Clinton Cards ha has done something similar. But as students, you didn't see that, and as a result, your results are unreliable because you've scored it at 0%, where in actual fact, at least three units were definitely closed. Environmental Quality Survey, um, I've mentioned that we come back to this one. Um, firstly, it, it, it's obviously biased, it's only your opinion, it's, it is just subjective. The, the problem here is that you guys visiting on a day where, let's be honest, you've got a bit of freedom coming your way, you've got some free time, you can go to Nando's, go to 
whatever young people do. Um, and the idea is that you may well want to get the environmental quality survey done quite quickly so you can spend that free time. And as a result, it, it throws into even more question marks about how reliable your data is when you've done the results quickly. It is only your opinion, however, we did take an average, so you can argue that this is more reliable on the grounds that it is an average result. Another big issue is that noise counted as a negative, so a very noisy area scored a, a, a negative score. Drake Circus is our example here. Drake Circus scored a minus two for noise, which is obviously like the worst score you can possibly get. And as a result of that, it dragged its environmental quality score down. However, the big question is this. Are noisy crowds in a bustling atmosphere actually what the development or redevelopment wanted? In terms of a shopping experience, surely you'd actually want some noise, so therefore it proves that it is being used and it's an exciting place for people to go. You wouldn't want it to be dead quiet like Market Avenue was, on the grounds that actually if you, you'd want your shoppers in that place. So just be aware that the Environmental Quality Survey has some real criticisms about what counted as positive, what counted as negative. There were some other issues as well for you guys to be aware of. Um, you only went on one day, which was a school day, midweek, and you only stayed for three to four hours. There is no way you can work out um, all the impacts of Drake Circus from spending three to four hours in Plymouth City Centre. It's not time manageable. It's not going to be reliable results. In addition, in terms of the sampling done, you did not visit Royal Parade or Armada Shopping Centre. You do not know what the impacts of Drake Circus have been there. You simply assumed that Upper Royal Parade is going to be positively impacted, whereas Lower Royal Parade will be negatively impacted. Armada Shopping Centre is actually um, further away. It doesn't really fit into the Upper Lower model at all. And as a result of that, we, we simply don't know how um, Armada Shopping Centre has been impacted. To work out the success of Drake Circus, really you needed to compare it with another redevelopment, for example, the Princess Hay redevelopment in um, Truro, or the um, Lemon Key um, redevelopment in Truro, to actually see if if the redevelopment was successful or not. How, how can you judge it to be successful unless you compare it to another redevelopment? The other one uh, affected some of you on the day was that Build a Bear event, um, a one-day singular event where... Um, I think it was you You pay the age of your baby for a bear. So the bears would normally be 14, 15, 16 quid. However, if your baby was two years old, you'd have to pay two quid for it. And, and as a result of that, it was incredibly busy outside Drake Circus, which um, would have massively skewed your results because on a normal day, those, those, those parents and kids wouldn't have been there. I think it was estimated that a thousand people attended that event and you would have seen huge queues outside of Build-A-Bear um, which I believe is actually in Upper New George Street. I'm not 100% sure. It might be Upper Cornwall Street, actually. But it would have been impacted on Drake Circus's results if you were doing a pedestrian count or environmental quality survey there. So those one-off events might well skew your results and might make it seem that Drake Circus is, has had a bigger positive impact on Upper Plymouth when actually it was the Build a Bear event, not Drake Circus, that has dragged those people in. After all of those criticisms, are your conclusions accurate and reliable? Well, no. You haven't collected enough data, you haven't got enough days, it's, it's just not reliable. Massive issues of subjectivity on your environmental quality survey means it's, it's inaccurate. Um, you can't really, therefore, build a valid conclusion off it. Probably the biggest issue on your day, however, was you can't prove the causality for the trends, uh, trends shown or the trends seen. Has Drake Circus actually caused what you have seen on the day? Reality, though, if you went back on uh, another day, for example, within the Easter holiday, spend your time making YouTube videos, um, you would probably see quite similar results. I, I do imagine that most people, most pedestrians, would still be in Upper Plymouth. The void count would still be lower in Upper Plymouth. As a result of that, your conclusions are partially reliable, but you will need far more evidence to actually support this. How to improve this field trip uh, is a question that came up in the 2018 exam, so there's nothing stopping it coming up in 2019, 2020. Uh, the most obvious one is to return and complete the surveys again, to compare the impact and, and then take an average from those. Obviously, return in more suitable 
conditions go at a weekend go in the holiday periods where people actually have leisure time and they're not tied to a workplace then you can really see if drake circus is busy or not um you should have taken um sorry should have taken you should have compared drake circus with similar redevelopment as i've uh, mentioned previously and i think the biggest thing that was missing here if you get asked for what other data can be collected you really should have done a questionnaire or survey of the local population get those people's opinions on the redevelopment it will obviously provide more evidence than one day um the perimporth example there for for one you did a questionnaire of 34 people in perimporth to get their opinions over a 10 20 30 year period you really have to ask local people in this to get their opinion since drake circus opened all the way back in 2006 you have one day's worth of evidence those people could give you 13 years uh, worth of evidence to, to see if Drake Circus has been positive or negative in their opinion. Uh, furthermore, I would have probably said um, you should have been asking business owners in Lower Plymouth and Upper Plymouth because you're making assumptions that, well, I'll tell you what, it must be great for Upper Plymouth because there's more people there, but actually the business owners might well tell you, well, actually it's not a positive for us at all. And obviously their reasons could be why well, it's more noisy, it puts people off going into my, my store, or um, there's more litter because people are eating in Drake Circus we don't know and the reason we don't know is we didn't ask them so overall uh, there are lots of ways you could improve this field work and that's the works that is absolutely everything uh, done for uh, the Plymouth field trip it's going to be a video that's close to about 43 44 minutes I'll try and find one joke just so those people who have gone all the way through oh god no, they're really not good. Uh, I can't even be bothered. They're really, really bad. Oh, here we go. What do you give a sick pig? Oinkment. See you later.